अजय शर्मा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग नॉलेज पार्क थर्ड ग्रेटर नोएडा द सब्जेक्ट दैट आई टीच इन दिस सेमेस्टर फॉर बीटेक सेवन सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स बैकग्राउंड इज ऑप्टो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स and optical communication and the topic that i covered in this video lecture is source to have a power launching output patterns power coupling power launching equilibrium numerical aperture laser diode to fiber coupling well uh, once you have a uh, output of uh, optical transmitter uh, which of course is a optical signal or a light signal now what is your next step obviously the next step is to couple this particular light that is coming from optical source into a optical fiber so uh, there is some launching you know there is a method to launch the light coming from the optical transmitter or optical source into a optical fiber so so the launching optical power from source into fiber uh, needs following considerations in that you have you should aware the fiber parameters you should know the specific parameters of of that particular fiber uh, through which you have to uh, guide your light which is the output of op your optical transmitter right so you should aware as an engineer optical engineer you should aware the fiber that you used uh, should you should know the following uh, parameters number 1 what is the numerical aperture of optical fiber means what is the you know numerical aperture means you know it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's defined on the basis of the you know power capturing uh, capacity of the optical fiber right then core size what is the what is the radius or diameter of a core because the light is propagated through core right then refractive index profile del then core cladding index difference n1 minus n2 right n1 is the uh, refractive index of core and n2 is the refractive index of the cladding so you should aware of these following parameters right these are the fiber optical fiber parameter not only that you should also aware the source parameters the optical source parameters what is the size of that optical source that side uh, that that side uh, is that size is compatible with the size of the core that should know th that you should know what is wh wh what is the radiance that is coming from transmitter and what is the angular power distribution of this optical source so these are the consideration of the op uh, source parameters so you should know these two uh, types of parameter fiber parameters and source parameters and before going into the coupling process coupling of light from optical source into a optical fiber now come to a, a very important term as far as coupling is concerned is the coupling efficiency what is coupling efficiency it is the measure of the amount of optical power emitted from a source that can be coupled into a fiber eta eta is equal to pf upon ps and what is pf pf is equals to power coupled into the fiber and ps is to power ps is equal to power emitted from the light source for example try to understand if eta is 80% what is the mean of 80% 80 upon 100 means if 100% light that is coming from optical source only 80% is coupled into the optical fiber rest 20% is just wastage right so this is the meaning of 80% coupling efficiency 
if you have 90% coupling efficiency means out of 100% coming from optical source only 90% of that is goes inside the optical fiber rest 10% is just the leakage which is the outside of uh, optical fiber so the coupling efficiency actually depends on types of fiber that is attached to the source second coupling process uh, means example lenses or the other coupling improvement schemes now there is a term that is uh, which we see called as a fly lead or pigtail what is this it is a short length of optical fiber which is attached with the source for the best power coupling configuration actually uh, what's happen when you uh, uh, when you you know uh, go through a optical source and when you purchase a optical source you know the the you know you know the inbuilt optical fiber is already attached to the optical source so that uh, inbuilt optical fiber of a small lens called pigtail or fly lead so that uh, in this you know coupling efficiency uh, can be improved because you you are in that condition you are not going to couple uh, the light from optical source to fiber but in that case you just attach your optical fiber which is already connected to optical source to the other optical fiber right so when you have a optical source with big tail you only concentrate on how you connect this big tail into the main optical fiber so big tail is also a optical fiber it is a small portion of optical fiber so so you the engineer only concentrate on how we connect this big tail to the main optical fiber so thus the power launching problem for these big tail sources reduce to a simple coupling optical power from one fiber to another fiber so when you have a pigtail already connected to the optical source now you only have a uh, have a process to connect one fiber to another fiber uh, where one fiber is a pigtail which is already connected to the optical source right so the effects to be considered in this case include when you connect fiber to fiber then there is some uh, fiber misalignments can be come uh, and these fiber misalignments are different core sizes this may possible the core size of the pigtail is not match the not match with the core size of your optical fiber this may be the case numerical aperture the numerical aperture of pigtail is not matched to the numerical aperture of the your main optical fiber core refractive index profiles so these are the three uh, basic uh, misalignments that come when you connect pigtail which is of course a small portion of optical fiber to the main optical fiber then second category is the clean and smooth fiber end faces so perfectly perfectly perpendicular to that axis so your fiber end faces perfectly perpendicular to the axis this is the condition and when you connect one fiber to another fiber and polished at at a slight angle to prevent back reflections so this particular care should be taken uh, while you are uh, connecting uh, one fiber to another fiber now source to fiber power launching so optical output optical output of a luminescent source is usually measured by its radiance b at a given diode current so radiance is very important role as far as the fiber power launching is concerned from transmitter to optical fiber so what is this radiance actually it is a optical power radiated into a solid angle per unit emitted surface area and is generally specified in terms of watts per square centimeter per stadian so radiance is equal to power per unit solid angle into per unit emitted surface area so solid angle is defined by the projected area of a surface patched onto a unit sphere to a point as shown in this figure so the angle that seen from the center of the sphere includes a given area on the surface of that uh, on the surface of that sphere uh, the value of the solid angle is numerically equal to the size of the that area divided by the square of the radius of the square
so this is a radiance of the or radiance means brightness of the sun so this shaded region is the emitted area center this is emitted area of led that is the light is coming from that area and p is equals to optical power radiated from unit area of the source into a unit solid angle so that's why the unit is watts per square centimeter per study so this is the unit of radiance so radiance is one of the characteristic of of the optical source so you should know as an engineer what is the radiance of that optical source look at this particular picture look at this this is your optical source and optical source have active active area active region where the actual light is coming so this is the reactive light is coming this is the low and this is your optical fiber having cladding core and cladding this core region so light should be entered into this core region but in this case you see that some of the light is coming to cladding and this is the loss of power so what we want actually we want that all the low this complete low is inside this core rather than some part is you know coming out this from the core region and that is a loss power right and this is the acceptance angle or you may say acceptance cone look at this fiber acceptance angle is it so this is uh, the how the optical uh, source having uh, light as output uh, you know coupled into optical fiber so care should be taken to avoid this loss of power so what we want we want that all the parts of this uh, all the part of the light is inside this core region uh, and we don't want that something is out from this core region now power launching versus wavelength so there is a relationship between the uh, between these so the optical power only depends on the radiance and not on the wavelength of the mode for a graded index fiber number of modes is related to the wavelength as so this is a mathematical expression which gives the relation between the number of mode that is supported by the multi mode optical fiber and this is the wavelength of the light that is coming from optical source right and alpha is a parameter that decide the profile right so and n1 is the refractive index of a core a is the radius of a core right so, so so twice as many modes propagate for 900 nm as compared to 1300 nanometer but the radiated power per mode source from a source is so how you calculate radiated power per source you divide the total power from the source by a number of modes so this is the more power per mode this is the power per mode right this depend upon lambda also so number of modes that is supported by the optical fiber also depend on lambda and power per mode is also depends on this lambda lambda is the wavelength of the light coming from optical source so twice as much power is launched per mode for 1300 nanometer as compared to the 900 nanometer so that is a conclusion i once again repeat two conclusions are there i again repeat two conclusions one conclusion is that twice as many modes propagate for 900 nanometer as compared to 1300 nanometer but the radi and twice as much power is launched per mode for 1300 nanometer as compared to the 900 nanometer so for fiber uh, with the fly lead attachment the connecting fiber should have the same numerical aperture that should be care that that care should be taken the numerical aperture should be matched uh, a certain amount of loss occur at this junction with is which is almost 0.1 to 1 db exact loss depends on the connecting mechanism excess power loss occur for few tens of meters of multi mode fiber as the launched modes come to the equilibrium so the excess power loss is due to the non propagating modes the loss is more important for surface led fiber coupled laser are less prone to this effect as they have very few non propagating modes the optical power in the fiber scale as so this is the power in this particular mathematical model 
this is the equilibrium power is equals to power at uh, 50 uh, numerical pressure when power uh, at 50 and this is the and into ratio of numeric equivalent numerical aperture upon numeric uh, aperture of uh, initial stage which is maximum after that you get uh, equilibrium numerical aperture so this is the mathematical model of that look at this picture this is fiber land this is numerical aperture Now look, now this is fine. So in this picture, this fiber length versus numerical aperture. So initially, the numerical aperture is maximum, and that is called numerical aperture input in. And after that, the after that, when you move towards the length of the optical fiber, that's this numerical in is settled down to numerical, uh, sorry, numerical aperture equivalent and a eq. So that numerical uh, that aperture equivalent comes after a certain length, and this is settled down, right? So after certain length of the optical fiber, the numerical aperture is settled down and uh, and constant, and that is called numerical aperture equivalent. And initially, it is maximum at the time of you know coupling. So Edge emitting laser diodes have an emission pattern that normally has uh, <clears throat> full width half maximum of 30 to 50 degree in the plane perpendicular to the active area region, 5 to 10 degree in the plane parallel to the junction. So as the angular output distribution of the laser is greater than the fiber acceptance angle, and since the last uh, laser emitting area is much smaller than the fiber core, so that one can use number one spherical lenses, cylindrical lenses, and fiber taper. So these are the techniques so that the coupling is, you know, uh, the efficiency, is, we, we can increase the efficiency of coupling by using these lenses. So we have two types of lenses, uh, spherical lenses and cylindrical lenses. So these are inserted between the uh, source and the fiber so that the light is more concentrated uh, on the core region of the optical fiber with these with the help of these lenses so this is to improve the coupling efficiency between uh, laser diode and optical fiber and same technique is used for vertical cavity surface emitting lasers in short we say that vcsel lasers we call it as vertical cavity surface emitting lasers so mass uh, produced uh, connections of laser array to parallel multimode fibers has efficiency of 35%. Direct coupling from a single v VCSEL sources to a multimode fiber result into efficiency up to 90%. So the use of homogeneous glass microsphere lenses have been tested in series of several hundred laser diode assemblies. So spherical uh, glass lens of refractive index 1.9 and diameter ranging between 50 to 60 micrometer were ex were ep epoxied to the ends of 550 micrometer core diameter graded index fibers having numerical aperture of 0.2. So the measured uh, full width half maximum values of the laser output beam were as follows: between 3 and 9 micrometer for the near field parallel to the junction, between 30 and 60 degree for the field perpendicular to the junction between 15 and 65 degree for the field parallel to the junction. So the coupling efficiency in these experiments ranged between 50 and 80%. So and thank you very much.